Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM19 Newcastle series with me, Daniel. It's season two, episode three, and we continue today with one of our biggest games of the season so far. But first, as you can see, we're flying high in the league. We're up in fifth place. We've just overtaken Chelsea after beating them 1-0 away from home with a slightly rotated side at the weekend. So to see how we got there since the last episode, we've only had a couple of months because we're coming back for this big one. We would played against United and drawn 0-0. That was a run of a few poor games against Everton, Spurs and United. But we've been back to winning ways since, and in fact we've only dropped two points in the league. Although we have lost one game in the first leg of the competition we're playing today. So we beat Sheffield United 2-1, they're marooned at the bottom of the league. Werner got a goal in that one, as did Matt Ritchie, before we won on penalties against Forest in the Carabao Cup. That was essential to get us where we are today. We beat Burnley 1-0 at home just before Christmas, Shelby with the winner there, and then 1-0 against Wolves on Boxing Day 2. Timo Werner the hero again. He's been one of the biggest differences this year, and he's certainly had an impact at the club. We won 2-0 at Struggle in Huddersfield, Dummett and Werner with the goals again, before a decent 0-0 draw at Southampton on New Year's Day. We then played in the FA Cup against Crystal Palace, a 2-1 win with Perez and Shelby. Slightly rotated side in that one, but we still came out on top. And then in the first leg of the game we're playing today, we lost 2-1 at Arsenal in the Carabao Cup semi-final. They rotated a little bit, but he still had the likes of Aubameyang out, so it's going to make the second leg very difficult if they play a similar team at home. However, since then we've had back-to-back -back wins in the league, Leicester 3-1 at home, Richie Drinkwater and Werner with the goals there, and then a 1-0 win at Chelsea. Despite rotating a bit, Matt Ritchie got the goal in that one. So we're in very good form, and as we mentioned before, all of that leaves us just in that gap between 5th and 7th. So it looks certain that we're going to get the club into the Europa League, although of course going to Wembley and winning the Carabao Cup could do that as well. We know if we get through today, we're going to be playing Spurs in the final. They battered Walsall in the semis. A very easy tie for them, and we probably would have preferred that one too. I can see Arsenal's team news has a few players out, including Aubameyang, who got both goals in the first leg. So hopefully that's a good sign going into today. So let's get into the match. It's the most important bit. We've got all the big hitters available, I think, so we should be at full strength today, unless any of the lads are tired from the Chelsea game of those who played. Obviously, Rob Holding's ineligible. He didn't play in the first leg because obviously he's on loan from Arsenal, so it looks like pretty much everyone's fit. The only one that's struggling a tiny bit is Dummett, but he's the only player who can play there properly. Sessegnon comes back out. He'd rotated in for the last game. That's because it was against Chelsea and Kennedy couldn't play that one. So Sessegnon will be back on the bench. Who are we going to take off there? I'm not quite sure. Maybe Isaac Hayden. Let's see what else we've got. We need to get holding out of the team. So Kieran Clark's in for him. Connor Cody will just drop into the bench there. And then because we're at home, we're going to bring Shelby back in for Sissoko. Generally, Sissoko plays in the box-to-box -box role for away games just because he's got better physical stats. And then Shelby comes back in as the playmaker when we're at home. So hopefully that won't backfire today. We can bring Sissoko on then on either the right or the middle as needed. But I think everyone else is just about there. We do normally rotate our keepers for the cup. But Nick Pope is subject to interest from Chelsea. So he may be going anyway. And for our biggest game of the season, it's all about winning trophies. We need to keep Butland in goal. There's so many teams in the Premier League that never have a go at the cups. We're certainly not going to fall into that category. Let's get into the game and see if we can get the result we need to get ourselves to Wembley. Almost identical formations. They're almost at full strength. There's plenty of big hitters in there. So we've just got to get into the first half and hope our lads perform. If we're at our best, we've always got a chance. As with the first few episodes of this week, since Tuesday onwards, I think, from any series on the channel, my voice will be a bit croaky. I sound a bit like Sean Dyche, but we'll get over it. We feel all right aside from that. Zivkovic with a free kick, and Butler makes a good early save, but early warning signs from Arsenal. And if they score a goal, it's probably tie over. It's a throw on the right to Arsenal with Bellerin. Richie intercepts it. After this game, the one thing we will do before the episode ends is just take you quickly through our plans for the January window. We're getting bids all over the place for some of our players. So it's just about hanging on to our squad, only letting the one or two go we're happy to, and then signing replacements. As one of their centre-halves just shoots from 40 yards. Arsenal have got the ball at the back with Diaz. He plays it to Socrates. Out to the right-hand side. Lopez running at us now. It's the only change in the formations. He's slightly more attacking. And what a goal that is. He's put it in the top corner. And let's be fair, we're still underdogs today. So we can't expect to be winning this game. 
It's a throw on the left for Arsenal with Hernandez. Shelby heads it away to Barkley. I haven't seen a special from him for some time. Probably my only disappointment of this season, as we can't have much else to complain about. Kennedy surges into the box, but he's put it just wide, and he probably could have gone on and taken another man on. But he shot from range, and it was comfortably wide. It's a throw on the right for us again with Yedlin. We can't really get out of our own half with ease as Richie just gives the ball away with a long punt downfield. It's Lopez again into Zivkovic. Butland makes a great save, but luckily it was offside. Hernandez throws it in. It's a foul. No, nothing given, but we're carrying on. What's going on here? Oh, it's VAR. Oh, that tells you I've been managing in the lower leagues for most of these series. Everything else on the channel is lower league based. We're in the League Cup. We've got VAR. Let's see what he says. He's coming back. What's his decision? Oh dear, it's got to be a foul. It's a free kick. Surely you can't use VAR for that. If the ball was outside the box, was he looking at it for a penalty appeal? Because if so, it was definitely outside the box. And that's just cheating. Lopez has put it in and the tie's over due to VAR being controversial again. I'm pretty sure it can only review penalty incidents. And it looks like there, the referee's just used it as an excuse to help the big team. Because it was nowhere near the box. So if it's just for a free kick, you can't use it for that. But it's half-time, we're 2-0 down, and unfortunately the tie's over. A fairly even game, but we've not made the most of our attempts, not getting any on target. Ronnie Lopez has been the difference as Dummett comes down the left at the start of the second half, plays it to Kennedy, and Lopez has fouled him. Let's get him on a yellow card and get him off the pitch. An hour gone, it's time for some changes. We've got to try and force the issue here. Kennedy's coming on off the left. Sessegnon for him, Richie off on the right, Sissoko on switching to that winger role, just trying to get to the byline and break through the lines. We haven't got many other options for now, Danny Welbeck could come on against his former club, but is he any stronger than Werner up there? Zivkovic back to Lacazette on the edge of the box, might not need to worry at this rate, as they seem to be getting through us quite easily. We've got him for another slide tackle pointlessly, it's clattered the post across, and it's behind now for a corner kick to Arsenal. It's going to be taken by Zivkovic himself. Up to the back post for Lacazette. Kieran Clark heads away and it is concerted pressure from Arsenal now. Yedlin's absolutely awful today. We're going to bring Doherty in for him. To be fair, Yedlin's not been back from injury long, so we can't entirely blame him. Let's see if we can hold on for two for now. We don't want to be embarrassed and lose our league form as well. Europa League qualification would be a brilliant point to end this series on and I'm sure Newcastle fans would be happy. They've got a good team to be proud of and they're working very hard in cup semi final 20 minutes to go, but unfortunately it looked like this tie's over. Just over 10 minutes left, it's a throw for Arsenal, they're attacking again. Thiago on the edge, what a goal that is. I was just about to go attacking to chase it, but there's no point now. 3-0 on the night, 5-1 on aggregate, and it's just been a bit too much against one of the best sides in the division. Shelby with a free kick, he's put it in, so at least we get a goal. And you know what? We will go attacking now. Let's just try and go all out and see if we can panic them with another one or two quick goals. We're nearly at stoppage time. It's not going to be our night, but we could get another goal with Dummy here. Into the box, he's out to Shelby. Now Doherty, into Sissoko. Drink water shoots just over the bar, but we've certainly put up a fight in the second half. Fair play to the lads. They never expected to win this, but they've done really well and competed against the top side. Doherty's having one last charge forward down the right-hand side, but he gives it away to Gwenduzi, and now Socrates can clear it away. Bellerin, back to Socrates again. Ruben Diaz, the centre-half, the one who shot from 50 yards in the first half. He's come and charging over halfway. Looks like he wants to do the same again. Finds Sivkovic. Sissoko intercepts it. This highlight's not helping my voice. It's a very long one. He's going forward now to Werner. Werner goes for the shot. Deflects to Sissoko, who's offside. Nothing's given, though. The flag went up. Sessignon scored. It's going to be a good goal for us. The fans have something to celebrate at the end. The flag definitely went up from the linesman for offside, but the referee didn't give it, and they didn't review VAR, which seems a bit strange. If they've got it in the game, at least use it for the appropriate things. The ball's cleared out for a throw by Arsenal, and that'll be the full-time whistle. A clear result once it went to 2-0. There was only one side who was going to win it, but we fought back well at the end and were unfortunate not to get more out of the game on the night, even though Arsenal were deserving winners on aggregate. There's the confirmation then. We're out of the semi-final stage, but at least we gave it a good go. As we mentioned with these blog style updates, we're going to quickly review some other parts of the club. So for us here, it's going to be the finances and what that means for the rest of this transfer window. We've got a chance to add one if we need. Our finances were at 70 million. We've still got 25 left in the transfer budget and a couple of hundred in the wage budget. 
So if we want to, we can go for one superstar sign-in, or we can just add a couple to the squad. But there's already a couple in the squad who haven't played much. The likes of Jacob Murphy, Isaac Hayden, even Connor Cody we signed in the summer. Muto's not playing much either. So if we are going to sign someone, I think it's got to be an improvement on the first 11. Let's have a quick look at our transfer window. We've not got anyone on the radar just yet. In terms of ins, we're not looking. But we've got 25 million in the bank. And in terms of scouted players, there's so many options up there. The best of which being the likes of Davison Sanchez, Lucas Torreira at Arsenal, and more likely Ruben Neves, who's playing for a bottom half Wolf side. So we will try and get in one of those, but I don't know if we've got enough money for any of those three. The only one I can see that may be affordable is Michael Keane, but he's 27 and not a huge step up on what we've got. So I would rather get the likes of Neves or Sanchez in. But we'll see how that works out and when we get to our next episode, hopefully you'll see. If we go to our schedule, as we mentioned, we're not going to do too many episodes here. We've got three really tricky league games coming up after the FA Cup tie. So that's probably going to be our losing run, as there was before the previous episode. Coming up towards Easter time, we've got some big games. Everton, Spurs, United. And if we do well in the FA Cup, we could have a quarter and semi-final there too. So we'll be back around then, and then we'll do one more after that at the end of the season. We've got Wolves on the last day, and maybe it'll be a return for Ruben Neves if all things go well. But that will be all for this episode. If you did enjoy it, please put a thumbs up on the video. Apologies again for the slightly rustic voice. If you like Sean Dyche, then this is going to be the episode for you. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM19 content from my two long-term stories, as well as weekly updates from this series for the rest of the season, and also FIFA 19 content. The next episode's out in around an hour and a half's time at 4.30 today. Let me know in the comments who you think I should sign out of our scouted list. I'll take you back to the screen so you can pause it and have a look. Let me know the one you think I should be going for. But a big thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you next time.